Hi guys, this is FI Dugout here, and in these next few videos I'll be valuing the top 50 players on the index. But before we get into that, we have some good news regarding the bank builder. Since last video, Gay has been the subject of two bids from PSG, as well as being linked to Arsenal and Man City. I'm going to hold on to this trade, as I think he will go to PSG, where he is worth a lot more. Hauer has enjoyed a productive season at Lyon. He is a regular feature in the first team, and at only 20 years of age, he is still young, which many traders like. He has had some high praise this season from Guardiola, and I think in the summer, a lot of top clubs will be looking at him. If we head over to Index Gain, we can see our player info report. Although not winning any dividends yet, bar in-play dividends, he has shown he could potentially be good for performance buzz as he hit a peak score of 215, which would maybe have won on another day. He has also been unlucky with the amount of game-winning goals he has got in ratio with how many goals he has actually scored. A game-winning goal is a goal that has won the game for any given team. For example, the second goal scorer in a 2-1 win. If it ends 3-1, the second goal scorer still has the game-winning goal. His shot stats are very impressive for a midfielder, averaging 2.33 a game. Is he a good hold, you ask? I think short term he has some difficult fixtures coming up and he could be out of the Champions League, so therefore may reduce in price. However, long term I think he is a very good choice and I think we will see him at a big club in the next three years. The 49th most expensive player on the index is Frankie de Jong, who has recently signed for Barcelona. The 21-year-old will hope to break into the team next season and faces lots of competition for his place. Looking at Barcelona's midfielders, I feel he is probably overpriced depending on his performance buzz scores next year. However, I think he is adequately priced when looking at some of the youngsters who are more expensive than him. From his player info report, we can see he has a decent performance buzz average with Ajax in the Champions League, which they are still in. Most of his performance buzz points are accumulated from passes, averaging 73 a game. Is he a good hold? Short term, he has only got two PB games coming up, as he currently plays in the Dutch League, which is ineligible for performance buzz. The two games are against Real Madrid in the Champions League, if Ajax get a result and he performs, I could see an increase in his price. Long term, if you believe he will play a large amount of the season for Barcelona, then I believe he is a good investment. If not, I would personally use my money elsewhere. Deli Alley comes in at number 48. A player I strongly dislike being an Arsenal fan. However, there's no doubt the boy has talent and has scored a large amount of his goals from midfield in his career. Ali is probably one of the m most safe, stable holds on the index and has only risen slightly in the past year compared to many other players on the index. He was finally gathering momentum in his price until he recently got a hamstring injury. Considering he has scored five goals this season, he has surprisingly poor performance buzz scores. From this report I can see two reasons for this, one being that he's unlucky with the amount of game winning goals he gets, the other being he only averages 73 minutes on the pitch combined with the fact he only averages 31 passes a game. He has however won media buzz in the past and I think this was around the time of the World Cup. Is he a good hold? Short term, although he is injured at the moment, he will start to rise when he returns to the team. Long term, Tottenham may have to sell to fund new players and they could be persuaded by a big bid from a top club. Therefore, there is potential for him to win media buzz due to the transfer. Coutinho is the next player who we look at, who after a huge transfer from Liverpool hasn't really set the world alight at Barcelona. He has been in and out of the team and there have been many reports coming out that he's unsettled at the club, 
therefore provoking a transfer in the summer transfer window. Looking at his player info report, I think Coutinho is a player suited to performance buzz, but he has been unlucky this season. He only plays on average two thirds of each match and has scored five goals without any of them being a game winning goal. He averages 2.52 shots a game, which is good for a midfielder. His dividends last season were amazing, accumulating £1.58, many of those being media buzz for his transfer. Is he a good hold? Short term, Barcelona have some easy fixtures coming up, as well as the Champions League. It's just a question about game time with him. Long term, I think if he does get another transfer, he'll have a large media pool as seen last season with his move from Liverpool to Barcelona. Therefore, I think he is a good long term hold. The final player I will look at in this episode is Lukaku. Many traders' perception of Lukaku as a footballer is terrible. So why is he such a high price? Possibly because he is coming into some form of late? He does have some purple patches, but overall I don't think he should be getting in the United team anytime soon. There really is no need to look at Lukaku's player info report to know he is awful for performance buzz. Looking at this, I think the main thing keeping up his price is the fact that he's won media buzz in the past. Although this was when he signed for Man United. Is it a good hold? Short term, I don't think he will get into the United team, so no. Long term, definitely not. Thanks for watching guys, and let me know if you like this type of video, and what you would like me to do in the future.